Right, so one of the things about um, fishing rods, and I don't know if it's that important for a butt section, but there's this concept of um, a carbon fibre rod has a kind of a spine or a backbone, and it's to do with when the, the rod's been, or the pieces have been rolled, there's like a thicker bit, and there's this idea that the rings, depending on the type of rod, are supposed to either be on the same side as that thicker bit. You can't see it. There's various ways of testing it, but I've sort of got this idea that, you know, this is not much flex for the butt section of a rod and probably any other rod that I would use would have even less flex. Um, but I'm going to take the assumption that whoever made this rod um, knows a hell of a lot more than I do and they would have figured out the best place to put the rings and I'm just going to copy that. Um, so what I want to do is I want to put some tape um, at various places down the rod so that I can then mark and then I know always where I need to line everything up. So it's just very, very simple. I'm just going to put maybe a couple of centimetres up from above and below. Literally just like that. And then I'm going to mark. I'm going to do that several places down. And I'm going to finally put one which is just closer to the, um, the handle. But bearing in mind that I want to put the hip keeper on there, um, I still want to make sure that I've just got that in place. So I'll do that off camera because it's not particularly exciting. Okay, so three pieces of tape. Just see I've got some markers on there. They follow the line of uh, the ring. Yeah. So now I want to think about the positioning of the reel uh, with the idea of I want to put a ring of uh, tape above, on the handle uh, and above that is where I'm going to cut um, the cork off because that's where the new, hand, uh, the new reel fitting is going to be. So I found the best way of figuring this out is it does need a bit of, a bit of thought but so this is the handle with the, the, the reel fitting I'm going to put on. Uh, this is why I've got the reel. The thing is, is right, this kind of is attached. So we can sort of think about where this is going to go. But what we also need to think about in my case is I want to put the hook keeper on. So I want to make sure that when I'm unscrewing this, I've got enough to where I can take the reel out pretty comfortably so you know, I'm going to leave a little bit of extra room there but then it's not going to get in the way of the um, of uh, like whacking into the hook keeper once I've got it on there so I'm sort of lining things up I'm sort of thinking about it and I think um, I'm going to also pick a spot where I think pretty much every rod that I've ever worked on you've got the the, the rod handle is built using rings which are then glued together so I'm going to actually cut into a re into one of the, the gaps and then that's going to be my marker so I want to uh, I'm going to go for the closest gap up and down here right so I think I'm going to go if I, if I, I think roughly I know where I'm going to go but I'm just going to Okay, I've kind of got a mental note of where that is. It's quite easy to remember because of the, the markings on the rod. Okay, the reel is kind of fixed. Go back. Is that going to work? Could I actually go down another one? Probably could. So I'm actually sort of now know that I need to cut from here upwards, oops, on the other side, sorry. So from here upwards, this will remain, this will be the new handle, uh, the new fitting. Knowing that it's gonna end here, but then that was just above that little bit of whipping, a tiny bit above it. Knowing that once it's undone to come off, so if I go back to where I was with my marker, so it's gonna be here, that's roughly how high it would go. So I know roughly now 
that would be more or less where the top's going to be. So I'm going to put just a little strip of tape. And I, that's not that kind of exact, but it, it sort of gives me a guide that tells me the hook keeper must be at least to here, maybe a little bit further up, so that then I know I can always undo. And undoing is not going to just whack into that hook keeper because that would be like a real pain in the ass, yeah. So we now know. So I've got a, uh, I now know what ring I need to take it off from. So what I'm going to do is just put, whoops, that didn't go well. Put a line of tape or a ring of tape on the handle, which I now need to start again. There's my marker, there's my marker. And I'm putting my ring, my line of tape about one millimeter below the gap, so the line that I've used. So can probably just about see that's my marker and if you can't okay got to put another center line on this piece of tape as well um, i found that this is actually just useful for um, uh, when i'm trying to line up the real fitting so i can just look down I can see the line, I can look into the eye. I've got a mark, yeah. So from here all the way down, that's the eye, that's kind of the center of the eye, that's what I've got. So to me, they are enough for being able to then sort of start stripping the rod down. Right, so I'm going to start stripping. I'm actually going to start taking the uh, the rod apart, which uh, you know takes a little bit of a um, a deep breath, and you know let's just start doing it. Um, I always start by taking the the ring off first of all. I don't know why I just do. So there are countless YouTube videos on how to remove and um, re whip um, eyes onto or rings onto rods. Um, you know the the but is a and, and they are pe from people that know uh, a hell of a lot more about this than I do. But ultimately, we need to do is is try to remove this without causing any damage to the blank. Yeah, um, the idea being that you want to put it back to how it was, or if not even better, especially because there's a lot of advancement in the, the quality of um, the, uh, the the epoxy and so forth, especially on older rods where you might still be using yachting varnish. So need to apply some heat to soften it up and then um, the idea is then to nick the uh, original whipping threads and try to unravel them um, with the idea of hopefully as much comes off as possible of the original coating and you don't need to do too much clean up afterwards now um, if you if you um, the, the easiest way is just to use a cigarette lighter um, the idea is, is you just got to make sure you don't put too much heat. You, what you don't want to do is you don't want to be affecting the resins inside the carbon uh, for, or the carbon fibre because that's really going to screw your rod up. Yeah, So it's, it's always going to be um, just applying a little. Um, and you know it, it is really just a sort of uh, going like this, seeing if I uh, can find. So I'm using a blade. I'm going to cut um, against the... the, the um, the ring, uh, the idea being to just try to get a little bit of a, a nick to then start to uh, to undo it. So hopefully this is enough. I'm going to put my glasses on though because I'm going blind.
So I've just pulled a little piece up. You can just see there, I think. And then it is literally a case of just unraveling. come off really easily out yeah. so one side's done. I'll do the rest off camera because I um, don't really need to repeat it and then I'll come back. Okay so finish this piece one ring so I'm going to keep that because um, that's going to go back on if I can remember which way around it goes and what I do have is I've got some crud on here that needs to be cleaned off and as I mentioned previously, the more that comes off, the better. Um, the idea is um, it's just so much easier um, to, to whip onto a smooth surface. So that's why um, I found that using the um, broken CD is really, really useful. So um, again, a little bit of heat um, is required. Um, I think I mentioned previously that I've uh, recently bought myself a, uh, a heater. So it's this little gun thing. Um, I bought this from Amazon. Uh, I've also seen them available actually cheaper on eBay. But the thing to uh, look out for is firstly that it's got the right plug for what you for the country you're in. So I needed to make sure this time I'm, I'm now living in the UK. Um, but also that it's got a long lead. And that's actually quite important because I've seen a few people who have commented online where they bought one of these things online, only paid like a five or four, and then when they got it home, it only had like a 40 centimeter long um, lead. And that was just like really, really inconvenient. The one that I bought off eBay actually has, sorry, off Amazon, actually has a two meter, six foot um, flex. And it's just so, so useful, yeah. So. Just going to be applying a, a little bit of heat, not too much, just a little bit. And then this is my broken CD, and it really is a case of trying to scrape off as much of the epoxy as I can, trying to get it. The, uh, trying to get it as flat as I can yeah as I said before using the CD is just better than using this sometimes it is needed um, but I am trying to keep as much of the finish on the blank as I possibly can um, if I was actually wanting to strip the bank the blank entirely back of what all of the coatings that are on there back to the raw native um, carbon fiber then great use just use a blunt knife and just scrape it off again a couple of really interesting videos about that and probably talk a little bit about that a bit later on but for me the um, the idea of just using the CD to um, just keep on scraping away so will I get it perfect I am gonna have Depends on how the rod has been finished. Sometimes um, when a rod's built, um, it's finished and then the rings are whipped onto it and then the, the whippings are coated. In that case, then obviously the original finish is going to be through the whole length of the blank and it's going to be underneath the... Um, the rings and you'll see it underneath most cases this is not so what actually happens is um, the rod is whipped up and then a coating is put on so where the whippings are then that won't get that top coat and there are various products out there that people use um, what seems to be very popular at the moment is actually something which I think is, is, is originally designed for um, waterproofing um, bricks of all things but it's flexible and it, it's very easy to apply and gives a, a good finish. Um, personally I don't use that I've been um, experimenting with um, 
a type of Gorilla Glue, which um, you can literally wipe on and wipe off again and gives a really nice finish, but that's something else. So in this particular case for this rod, what we do see, and, and it's actually easy to tell here, sorry, here, is we've got um, the, the, the rod finish ends and then where the whipping was, it's actually the original um, carbon fiber finish, yeah? So what I wanna do is I just wanna use a bit of time, bit of effort just to get, get this as smooth as I possibly can. The idea is I don't really wanna damage the bit in the middle because it will look shit. Yeah, I just wanna try and get it, all of these lumpy bits as smooth as possible because it will just make it so much easier when I'm whipping it back up again. So I'll spend a bit of time scraping um, and then I'll come back. Okay, so I flipped the camera around. So I've actually got it. Um, so my phone ran round. Uh, I'm recording this on my phone, and I've actually got it jammed in the uh, roll of masking tape, which seems to be making a pretty good makeshift holder. But you can see that this is where the um, uh, this is where the ring was, and uh, it's cleaned up pretty well. The most important thing is. Um, for it to be as smooth as possible but we're, it's just a really painful thing when you've got little ridges and everything and you're trying to whip it up and it hits one of the little ridges and it stops the line from laying up sorry the thread from laying cleanly and just becomes a real pain in the ass so that's that's pretty good I'm happy enough with that I should say that um, after I finished with my um, CD scraping um, I did actually um, give it a little bit of a going over with um, some very, very, very uh, fine um, silicone uh, emery paper. Uh, I think this is, uh, this is thousand, uh, this is actually thousands uh, grit, so, and it's pretty worn. So that's, that's come up pretty well. So now we're gonna take a look at the, doing the handle. So I want to remove all of this, I'm actually doing this while looking through my phone, I'm going to stop that in a minute, but uh, all of this, and we can see the rings with the cork. I want to go from this line here, so it's about one, one and a half mil from my tape upwards, right? So what's one thing that I learned, so this was a lesson learned, is... Um, there will be glue between these rings. There will be, right? There will be the way that they've been put, the rod's been put together. There would have been glue on the inside of the, the, the um, rings of cork. They get slotted together and it will splodge out between the gaps. So there will be something between them. So what's uh, quite important is to actually cut into this line all the way round so that when we start um, taking off the rest of it, it won't cause any tears in here. Yeah, that was something that I learned. So just passing that on as a tip. Yeah, so cut all the way along. So let's start with a, uh, hoping that we can see this and I'm not looking through the phone yeah so it's a case of I'm using this blade we could also use this uh, Stanley knife if I wanted but I'm just going to use this and I'm just going to make sure that I have cut all the way around and it's better rather than trying to cut it all through in one sort of slice if I'm doing it bit by bit because once I've got a bit of a guide a bit of a score in there then 
seems to be a lot, lot easier to get a clean cut. So cork's soft, yeah, so I think that's probably a good start. I can feel when it's hitting the blank. And I guess if I think about this logically, I'm cutting down. You can see I'm getting to to where this oops, where this line where this hole is in the blade. So if I was to then just kind of make a bit of a simple comparison, it kind of looks like it's in the right the right place. Yeah. Right. Now comes the interesting bit. I'm going to try and do this when I'm cutting away from myself. I don't um, really, really want to uh, be doing myself any damage. So the trick to removing this I found, Stanley knife. If I cut with the blade fully extended, exposed, whatever the right word is, I'll start carving through. What I don't want to do is I don't want to start carving into the blank. So get that blade so there's only a little itty bitty bit poking out. I know. If I go to there, I'm going to hit the blade. I'm going to bring it down back a little bit. And what I want to do, can we see this? We can, is I'm cutting up. through like so. I'm going to do it a couple of times. Got some pretty big scores going through. As we can see. And now I'm going to use my flat blade. So I'm using a putty knife. You can use a kitchen knife or a table knife, or whatever. You just want something that's blunt, but actually you can you can have a bit of um, you can twist without it the, the uh, without doing some kind of damage to the to the the blade because you want it to be quite rigid. So I'm trying to get this in. Might move my uh, collection of floats before they go flying. This is one of the grooves just here. Get in there like that and twist and it starts to come apart. Now this is an interesting place now because you never know what you're going to uncover underneath um, a cork handle and it can actually give a bit of an indicator of the quality of the rod by what you uncover because um, uh, it sort of depends a little bit. So I can see that this um, handle has actually been packed with um, masking tape. Yeah, so I'm actually going to just quickly grab these. These are what handles are built up from. So they tend to come with a particular diameter. And as you can see that, you know, this diameter here is bigger than this. So it needs to be packed. 
various ways that it could be done. And generally on a, a really, really high end rod, what would happen is the thinner blank that would be underneath here um, has a string or braided fishing monofilament or something um, wrapped around underneath and that's used to actually pack out the diameter so that these things will actually fit on yeah i've never yet unpacked a rod where the diameter has been the same and uh, so now all we do whoops is if i can which i can't is just keep on working to get all of this cork off. So sometimes you can do it with your hands. Sometimes you need to just keep on going at it. And uh, I've just been told off by my wife for making a mess. I've already had to vacuum from doing the uh, rod ring and I'm sure I'm gonna have to do it again. But now see this is what is required is to get all of this off up to this score line here so I want to get this cork off but I want the one that's under the tape up to this line I want it to be as I want it to be intact I actually don't want it to be damaged because ultimately this here is what the end of the real fitting is going to butt against. Yeah, so the, if it's got a nice finish, nice and flat, although I am going to sand it actually slightly to give it a little bit of a chamfer, the better it will be. So I'm going to press on and just clear all of this soft, this old cork off and uh, when that's done I'll uh, restart recording again because it's not that exciting to see me strip all of this off. Yeah. Right, so the cork is off. Um, I can, we can see the masking tape and there is this little bit of um, kids whipping. Although it's interesting that this is a slightly different colour than the red that was used further up. I need to remove this so it's actually going to be the same kind of technique as taking off the rings yeah so a little bit of heat get a nick um it's going to be relatively easy by the looks of things just to get under there and then just unravel it um very much assuming it is whipping kind of feels plasticky but it doesn't matter and then i want to also get all of this masking tape off um so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna get a blade just this one here and i'm just gonna work it around here just to try and get into the um into the tape as much as possible so that i can get this to be as clean as possible um i'll also just where are we we are here i just want to clean up a, a little bit in and around here as well just to focus that a bit better yeah yeah, just to get that little ex excess bits there, which can just be scraped up a little bit. So I'll clean this up and then I'll come back. <laughs> 